Okay, this is the Dean, and I'm going to show you how to track something in Adobe After Effects. This can be used for lots of things if you want to put smoke in a piece of footage that's kind of shaky and you don't want the smoke to be static, you want it to sort of follow the footage, or you want to put something in a screen. And here's something that I already made uh, to show you. We're going to hit play to show you what it looks like. And you can see it's not perfect, but it sort of follows it around. And if you're really concerned about how it's going to look, you can always go back and do a little bit like manually where it messes up. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. So let's jump right in. Now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click down here, go to New, Null Object. Now that's going to be where we're going to put all our tracking data. Go up here to Workspace, Motion Tracking, okay. Now we're going to go to Motion Source, you're going to pick your footage, there's probably nothing else in your thing, so just pick that. And go to Track Motion. Now, you're going to want to go with Rotation, because it's going to rotate, obviously. Zoom in on here, and you want to pick two points that are distinct in their color and brightness. So for this one, and they should be far away from each other. Oops, zoom all, that. all good. Move that over here. I'm going to put that right on the clock. All good. I'm going to play that back. And now it's going to track it. Depending on Stop right there, because that's enough. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So now, we're going to go over to Edit Target, and we're going to put it all in our null object. Okay. And then hit Apply. And it's all good. Okay. And it'll open this up, and you can see... Oops, you can see that it's created keyframes for its position. And as you can see, there are a lot of them, and if you had done this by hand, you'd probably, like, kill yourself. But... Pretty good. Follows it quite nicely. Minimize that. Okay. All good. Now I'm going to open up my image. And I just drew this in Photoshop. CS4. And it's like high man, underlined, and there's a stick figure relieving himself. Great. So, we're going to take that and drag it into our comp right on top. Now that's going to put it on top, it's obviously too big, mine is actually the size of the comp, so I made it first, just because. Okay. There it is, all good. And now, I could just try and put this in the corners, but it's not that precise, and it kind of sucks, because it, like, adjusts the bottom one, too. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to go up to Effect, Distort, Corner... So now I can take the corners, I can just sort of stretch them around. I can do that too, but it's kind of psychedelic. So we're going to just take that, and you can use the arrow keys just to... Make sure that doesn't work that. Oops. I'm not as skilled in After Effects as I thought. Corner pin. Take the corners. Just, just make sure that it covers everything up. You don't want to see any of that. It's better that it, that it takes up more than... Too, more, too much than too little because it takes up too little. You're going to see the background, so I'm going to look like it's actually there. So it's going to look like it's plastered there. Okay. Better be all good. Great. So now it's there, and now if I scrub through, it's just floating. So it sucks. How are we going to put it with the null, with the tracking data? You can go over here, this a little swirly, Drag it down to Null Object to parent it, so it'll pretty much follow it around. Actually, I just want to move this. It's actually not as good as I had it before. For some reason. Just give me one second. Put that down here. Down just a little... Okay, it's good enough for now. So it's still parented. And it follows it around. And if I close this, open up null object, that's where it ends. And I actually think this looks a little bit better than when I did it before. I guess I just 
the pressure of actually making it for you guys in real time made it better. I think it looks a bit better, but there's some issues. It still kind of looks like it's just plastered there. And this is one of those things you have to do that really, you really have to think. I mean, it's not just you're following along with me. And your effect, well, our layer that goes on there is selected. Gonna head over to we are looking for. All right, blur and sharpen, fast blur. Fast blur is fast. Now, see how it's it's all nice. It's really clear in there, and the rest of the footage is not. My camera's not that good, so let's drag that out. That's way too much. Oops. I'm gonna try just go for value of two. A little more. I always overdo this just because. Like, I watch tutorials, and they're all like, oh, 1.5, it's like, it's too, I mean, it's like good, but, actually, yeah, yeah that's, good. that's good, okay, now it looks a bit more there, so, great, now that's there, and something that I learned from tutorials that I watch, and can never remember this guy's name. It'll probably be like on the bottom of the thing. I'll add it in Final Cut. So, one of the things that he always showed me was when I thought it was done, he'd always do something next. And I got something else to do. So I'm going to close these up to make room. You might have two nice 30 inch monitors. You can do that, but I don't. Let's go over to New Adjustment Layer right on top. And we're going to go to Pen Tool right here. And we're pretty much. This bright thing in the middle of our screen is obviously going to put out some light. And right now it doesn't. So we're going to draw where we think there'd be light. So I'm going to put, start right here, finger, we go down. So that looks fine. Now we're going to go over to layer, oops, sorry, effect, color correction, hue, and saturation. That'll bring up this. And. We want to brighten it, so we're going to go to lightness, and I mean, I can make it like that, and I can do it like that. If I put it to, like, here, like, if I put it to, like, 5, that didn't, it makes a difference. But, it looks okay, but you're going to want to go higher than you normally would, so go to, like, 15. I know that looks crazy, but you'll see. Now go down to your adjustment layer, and I mean, of course, it, it, varies depending on what you're doing. Go down to your adjustment layer, go to masks, and then mask one, probably some shortcuts I forgot about. And then go to feather. Feather will just make it more natural. Like here it's all like in your face like that. So pretty much just feather it where you want. I think that like right here, yeah it looks pretty good. The way it's sort of like a glow. Let's get out of there. Yeah so here how it sort of just like glows out get kind of screwed up a little bit on the thumb. And then, since it's just sitting there, which is pretty gay, go over here, parent, I'll go down. There we go. Null object. So now it's going to follow it. That's why, like, when you go to motion tracking, you can target it so it goes right to the iPhone, but it's better to have our thingy. It's better to have the, the null object to map it to, because then you can have pretty much an unlimited amount of things, but of course, you can't do that unless you have like a supercomputer. So now, we have it, close this, and I'll open up the null object again, you can see, I didn't analyze the, I didn't track it that long, but, just RAM preview it for you, it's might take a minute. Play. Oops. Okay, so I think that if you just watch like in the in the keyframes right here, I mean I think it looks pretty good. I mean of course like right here you'll see it goes like out of place. So we can just close that up, go over to our iPhone layer, corner pin, and just keyframe every. Oops, actually, I'm gonna go to the beginning and keyframe every one, just so it's all good. And then move up. Might have an issue right there. 